I'm doing a brake job on my 201 chassis 190E here, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity with, to share with you some tips uh, that you can use when you do your own brake work. I'm not going to be going over how to replace the pads and the rotors and the hoses. Rather, I'm going to show you a few things that you might want to put into your little quote, if I could call it, personal toolbox when you take on a new brake job. Number one, I want to talk about safety. When you're working around brakes, changing rotors and pads, always wear a face mask and wear a good one. One that has a nice seal around the face, also has an exhaust uh, port like you see here. I would avoid uh, these cheap ones that you see here. Uh, these are probably good enough for when you sweep the floor or maybe work in your wood shop. Now I've already wetted this down so I'm not going to be putting the face mask on now because it'd be very difficult for you to hear what I'm saying. But I would have this on if I were doing this. And you're going to look at this and you're going to say, well, there's a lot of dust in here, a lot of dirt from, you know, accumulation of brake dust and dirt off the road. The one thing you never want to do is hit it with compressed air. Uh, that's going to put all kinds of dust into the air in, in your garage or shop. You want to control the amount of dust. And the best way to do that is to use a wash tub like I have here. Go ahead and fill it up with hot soapy water. You can take a brush and just brush over it, get into those uh, emergency brake shoes and all around. And I use a cup and I just pour over the area to rinse it like this. And then, then I'll get up on the top of this backing plate here. You'd be amazed how much crud you'll get off your brakes when you do this. And you can just keep, you know, picking up the soapy water, pouring it over and rinsing it and eventually you'll be able to let, see it rinse clean. And that, at that point, you can just let it air dry. You don't need to use compressed air. The other thing that I always do when working on uh, rear brakes is I clean this hub face right here. This is something that's often missed. And if you don't clean the crud, the rust off of that, when you install the new rotor, it may not seat properly and you may have braking problems in the future. There's a number of ways you can do this. I use an air die grinder with a Scotch-Brite pad attached to the end, and I grind away on that until I get a nice, clean-looking surface like you see in this picture. If you do not have this tool, you know, a couple of good Scotch-Brite pads will work just fine, but plan to do that on all, all four wheels before you install your new rotors. Also, I recommend you always use brake pad paste when you're installing new pads. You'll note this is the new style pad that has this uh, plasticized backing. If this is the type of pad you're installing, you do not need to put paste here. But rather, I recommend you use the paste right along the edges of the brake pad where it comes in contact with the calipers. Also put a little in the holes where the pins go through. That is, that is going to help with the metal to metal contact. It'll also allow that pad to move more freely in the caliper and prevent corrosion in the future. Just a couple more tips to wrap this up. If you're installing new rotors, most of these will come with a light film of oil or grease on them to prevent corrosion. You need to make certain that you thoroughly clean the rotor before you install it. Once again, hot soapy water is a good solution to making sure those rotors are clean. If you are installing new hoses, as I will be doing here, and you have a car with ABS brakes, I'm going to recommend that you never let all the fluid get out of the brake master cylinder reservoir. If you get air into the system, you're going to have a much more difficult time bleeding your ABS brakes. So what I do is I change one hose at a time, I minimize the amount of fluid spill, and then I go back and refill the reservoir before I go on to the next hose. And then finally, anti-seize compound. Maybe you had that struggle to get that, that back rotor off. Maybe it was stuck to the hub. Well, to prevent sticking in the future, before I install the new rotor, I take a little bit of anti-seize compound and I just rub it right around here on the hub. And at that point, I can go ahead and install the new rotor. Using these tips, it's going to make your job a lot easier and you'll have much more success in the future.